Hi, I'm David Robinson, Chief Data Scientist at DataCamp, and welcome to another Tidy Tuesday screencast where I analyze a data set I've never seen before in R. So uh, I'm excited for this week. This week is the American holiday Thanksgiving, and I think we're going to be analyzing a data set that has something to do with um, Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, it looks to me like there are two choices of data sets that I can analyze today. Thanksgiving dinner or Transgender Day of Remembrance. Okay, the Transgender Day of Remembrance, my understanding, has to do with honoring uh, transgender people who were killed or lost to suicide. And um, I don't know that much about it, and I don't want to do it in injustice by rushing through an analysis in an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and analyze the Thanksgiving dinner data set. So this is this um, Thanksgiving, 2015, Thanksgiving 2015 data set on the, uh, the data behind the story, what's your, uh, what your part of America eats on Thanksgiving. Right, I'll take a look at that. This looks like a really important and, and possibly interesting data set. I encourage other people to take a look at it um, and try that out themselves. All right. We're going to be looking at SurveyMonkey data with uh, 1,000 respondents. And it's going to be questions like, um, do you celebrate Thanksgiving? And what is the main dish? All right. So survey data we're looking at. I'm not sure we've looked at survey data in the five previous uh, data sets that we've taken a look at. So let's download it. Okay. As before, what I do is I grab the link to the raw data. Then I go into our studio, create a new RMD. I usually do library tidyverse when I'm analyzing data. And then I do read CSV and I give it the URL. Oh, this is going to be interesting. This is actually, I can already tell from the number of columns, this is going to be slightly less tidy data than we've historically had um, when we were, and I was analyzing it. All right. So the questions include, do you celebrate uh, Thanksgiving? I'm guessing. What's your main dish? Right. One thing I immediately notice is we've got these groups of columns, like of variables, like side one to side 15, pi one to pi 13. This is gonna be great because this is a data set that's not necessarily tidy, in that we might have multiple choices of pi. I'm gonna take a quick look at this, um, at the, the documentation where it mentions what each of these columns mean. Could be loading up, but I'm guessing it means like how many of these pies do you have, or what are your what are your most common pies? Aha! Which of these side dishes are typically served? Okay, I've seen data like this before in um, from SurveyMonkey, and. I think we're going to have a particularly, uh, the story I think is that each of these pies represents one of the pies and it's going to have values within it that are these particular, um, uh, that, that are the particular choices of pie or side. All right, we're going to we're definitely going to take a look at that. I'm going to start with the simpler columns of the ones we don't necessarily have to, have to tidy. Uh, there's a couple starts like how many people celebrate Thanksgiving? No, uh, the vast majority of people. Uh, and, um, I'm guessing for most of the time, we're probably going to have to filter for the yeses for most analyses uh, of this. And we've also got age. Let's see. Uh, I hope it's a numeric column. It is not. Age is a range. Okay, so if I count age, I could graph the age. And uh, column, and uh, let's take a look at the number. Uh, luckily, it actually ends up in the order we were hoping for, 18 to 29, 30 to 30, 44, mostly by accident, 1, 3, 4, 6. It's ending up in actually alphabetical order. But yeah, so we have a distribution of ages. Mostly, most people in the data sets are above 30, but really it is pretty uh, spread out here. Okay. Uh, I wonder, let me see, I can actually change this into a bar plot, say fill equals gender. Right? It looks like mostly about half male, half female, maybe a few more females and males. It's uh, hard to say. Okay, 
we could take for some of that data. We're mostly we most of it take a look at uh, particular differences across ages, maybe across gender. It's kind of hard to imagine there being a shift between um, genders. Oh, it, in that it says which of these are typically served rather than say which of these do you enjoy. It's hard to imagine that men go to to Thanksgiving dinners that have different things served. Systematically, that would be hard to imagine. Okay, a few other yes or no questions, like uh, how, like do people pray? I'm sure that that matters a lot based on um, uh, uh, based on location. I wonder if we see anything uh, here from location, but what was it? We pray. Uh huh. Let me see. Prayer. Uh, a majority, yes. Uh, some missing data. About one third, no. Okay. A few other questions we might just be interested in. Do you work on Black Friday? Okay, I'm just glancing through uh, mostly missing data. Uh, I'm just glancing. Yeah, does your employer make you work on uh, Black Friday? How would you describe where you live? Community type, it looks like. Do you be rural, suburban, or urban? And we have one more question here, U.S. region. Yeah, this I imagine is going to be relevant when we look at what does uh, your part of the country serve, uh, serve, which is in fact, here's what your part of America eats on Thanksgiving. That was in fact, it looks like the original 538. I don't tend to read the articles uh, before I do these analyses. I like to come up with my own questions to ask and answer, but I'm going to guess that's what they were taking a look at. Okay, let's start with some of these. Let's see, yeah. Let's start with what's the main dish, let's start, uh, let's say. Main dish. Looks like it was a multiple choice question. Vast majority Turkey. Okay, that, that, that's, um, actually I think we're not gonna have a lot of interesting data here. Almost everyone is Turkey. I'm going to start uh, actually writing this out. Almost everyone serves turkey as the main dish. That wasn't, that. that's, uh, we could certainly look at who serves other, thing else, but um, probably not, probably not, uh, not too interesting. We have, how is the main one prepared? Usually if I'm going to look at how is it prepared, and I want to look at it alongside the main dish. That's why I'm counting both these columns at the same time. The vast majority of people have either baked or roasted turkey, some fried turkey. All right. So again, when I say that's not that interesting, what I actually mean is that there's not a lot of there's not going to be a lot of information content uh, in terms of say differences between regions. For example, if it turns out that um, let's look back at regions for a moment. If it turns out that East, North, Central has Turkey 90% of the time, whereas the Pacific has Turkey only 85% of the time. It's really, it doesn't feel like the kind of thing I would build an analysis around. Uh, all right. So that's some of the main questions. We have baked and roasted turkey. I'm actually, I'm not in the United States. I'm, I'm with my wife's family in Israel this, uh, this week, but we are still having a turkey dinner tomorrow. It is very hard to find turkey in Israel. Uh, but let's take a look at some more... All right, we have, we can count the stuffing. A vast majority bread-based, some missing. Okay. Let's see, anything else? Is this, do you have cranberry? What kind of cranberry sauce do you have? Do you typically have gravy? I'm gonna leave, actually, I, I meant to um, main prep. What kind of cranberry sauce do you have? Do you typically have gravy? Count cranberry. The, notice there's the tend to be the cranberry, the, the like the multiple choice and then the other. So here's like majority of people have canned, some have homemade. That's an example of, of a question we could start to ask is what is the difference between people that do, um, the families that have canned versus homemade. Uh, and then we have our other, where people write all kinds of things, like both canned and homemade, or um, canned with added ingredients. All right, 
Uh, but it looks like the majority of people just put a um a, a default dance a default answer like canned or homemade. Okay. And do you typically have gravy? Yes. Okay. Those main answers, we might come back to them. Can versus homemade is, is I think, a little interesting. Um, I'm actually going to start with a question around that. Uh, which of these, these um, fields do we think might affect can versus homemade? One I might think of would be, um, would be income. So there's, uh, let's see. How much total combined money did all members of your household earn last year? It's plausible that the richer a household, the more likely they are uh, to do homemade. That's not necessarily true now that I'm thinking about it uh, because homemade is not necessarily more expensive. It simply takes more time. Hmm. No, then I'm, then I'm not so sure that's the, uh, that, that's the hypothesis I would use. Okay. Let's, we can find out anyway. We can find out for starters. We can ask, uh, I haven't looked at the inc a family income at all yet. So if I, uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we might want to make a graph of something like this. Whenever we do, we notice this has got to be an ordered factor. Uh, but right now, notice it's in a funky order. It tries to be alphabetical, but 25,000 to 49,000 is up here, 100,000 is down here. So it wouldn't be a very good graph. We would need to make this an ordered factor. There's a particular trick to doing that. Uh, now, I, uh, I need to get a number out of this column. There's a, a function in, I believe it's parse number in Redar, that if I apply it to family income, tries to pull out the first number that it can. So here it will try and pull out 10,000. Here it'll pull out 100,000. It's pretty clever because it even notices that there's commas we want to remove those. Now that doesn't seem so, might not seem so useful until I say, well, let me try mutate family income equals FCT reorder the family income column based on the parsed number of family income. Now I'm gonna go back to the count. Okay, so what happened is because I said reorder the family income based on the first number in it, this was a cleaning step where I was able to sort it in the order that I wanted it. All right, so I'm actually gonna take that and put that into a processing step. I'm gonna put it into the original time I read the survey. Ooh, I don't know what that's about, those uh, parsing errors. But now if I say, uh, now if I take the Thanksgiving, uh, now that I've cleaned it, I can count the family income. I can also group by the family income and ask the question like, let's say, what percentage of, um, what percentage of cram of, of them use, uh, of, of people use homemade uh, cranberry, juice, cranberry sauce? So I can start by saying count cranberry, homemade. Okay, I'm going to start by saying filter for um, cranberry it has to either be canned or homemade, because I wouldn't want a percentage to be uh, in, in just on its own neither of those. And then I'd say I'm going to put that before the group by summarize. Homemade is mean of cranberry equals homemade. Percentage of people that make their own uh, cranberry juice. It's usually good to say to have a size column anytime you have a summary. So here's where I could have a graph that would say relationship between family income and whether it's homemade. And because I've, uh, oop, I need, um, to add an aesthetic group equals one. Here it is. Whenever that looks uh, terrible because of the x-axis, I'm gonna need to say theme. This is something I just looked up, up many times. Axis text x equals element text. I need to rotate that text 90 degrees. This is the way I would do that. I would uh, add this theme element. Now the text is rotated. Okay, here's what it looks like. It's hard to say whether this is statistically significant. I haven't done a statistical test here. 
We can in a second, in fact, we can get a confidence interval, but it looks like what we could say is the people that make the least are likely to use homemade. These, this was a zero to nine to 10,000. A lot of these, hmm, it's a full family income that could be, I, I have to guess there'll be people that are um, unemployed. It's a rather low yearly earning. Uh, and then we have yeah, overall beyond that, the exception of I uh, prefer not to answer and missing data, beyond that we mostly see the higher the fa family income, the more likely to be homemade. Having said that, this could be statistical noise. I'm going to teach you a trick here. I've got, I'm gonna change this to number homemade over the total. All right, so we have, for example, in this uh, f interval we had 39 people, 19 of them said yes. Here, 137 people, 46 of them said, uh, said yes. 105, 26 said yes. All right, so we have our percentages. That's what we're showing over here. But we don't have uh, confidence intervals. There, we could use uh, our functions to get confidence intervals, but I have another approach. So I want to get a low and a higher bound for every one of these in terms of a fraction homemade. The way I can do that is using quantiles of the beta distribution. I'm gonna quickly show a, a link that you uh, can look at yourself. I spelled it completely wrong. Um, I was meant to write Jeffries has a Y, not an I. The story is that there's a, um, here it is. A Jeffries interval is a, um, is a way of calculating a confidence interval. It's very similar to the most common way, which is what, um, which, which is used by R, the Clopper Pearson. Uh, which what you do is you use quantiles of the beta distribution. What you say is I want the 0 to 0.025 quantile of the beta distribution with the homemade on one side and total minus homemade on the other. I also add 0.5 to both those parameters. These will be two parameters of the beta distribution. People that are familiar with Bayesian statistics might notice that this is using a unif uh, not a uniform prior, pardon me, an uninformative prior, and then saying what's your posterior distribution. Uh, so it has a Bayesian interpretation, uh, but it's actually just very easy to get the, to um, calculate for a large number of confidence for a large number of uh, intervals. So I ju I just said. Um, I, I just computed a low and a high confidence bounds for the uh, est for the percentage that um, of people that uh, that said yes to this question. The Clopper Pearson, which is what R use, gets very similar results. You change a couple of these numbers. I think this would change to one. Do me a favor and don't quote me on that. I usually use the Jeffries uh, confidence interval, uh, and. Um, all right, but it's a nice trick when you want to compute many confidence intervals at once. I just wanted to show, show that for a moment. All right, but now that I have that, I can actually add a geom ribbon. I can say on the, uh, let's have a line of homemade over total, and let's have a ribbon with, low, with y min is low, y max is high, and uh, make a transparent ribbon for our confidence bounds. Okay, when you put it this way, uh, you're adding these ribbon, you actually notice I'm not so certain of this trend. Notice there's really wide bounds for a lot of these intervals. It might not actually be true that, uh, that there's a trend. We're not going to do a statistical test right now. We've looked at this question of canned versus homemade uh, enough. I'm going to quickly add some, um, uh, some, what do you call it, some labels. Uh, percentage serving homemade. And uh, usually I would add a um, scale y continuous labels equals percent format. It's a start of a it's a start of a graph. It's one that doesn't tell us a lot, but uh, I want to show how how I would uh, relate this to a particular question. While we're asking these questions, I'm actually going to copy this, uh, copy and paste, uh, and I'm actually just going to say, what if I said how many actually. Um, how many people celebrate Thanksgiving as a function of family income? That might be a little more interesting than canned versus homemade as a question anyway. 
So I'm going to start by saying, uh, let me remind myself, count, celebrate, no and yes. Okay, there's no other um, missing values or anything like that. So I'm going to count celebrate equals yes and uh, celebrate over total. Print. So the question is, how many people celebrate Thanksgiving? I uh, didn't change one variable. Ah. How many people celebrate Thanksgiving as a function of their income? Okay, it's looking like, well, people that prefer not to answer are probably relatively uninterested in the survey or something like that. Uh, so maybe we wanna drop the family income uh, unanswered. Mostly there isn't a difference except for people that make below uh, twenty-five thousand dollars, it looks like if you make if you're making families that make very little are rather unlikely to celebrate Thanksgiving. The more they um, the more a family makes, the more likely they are, especially peaking around seventy-five to one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Though looking at the the confidence bounds, they are pretty wide. Okay, so that's a pretty interesting um, result. Okay. I, like I said, I'm not going to take a look, and that's some um, effective income on two things. On whether you celebrate Thanksgiving, which I really should have started with, that's a solid question. Uh, uh, whether you celebrate, um, I haven't even saved my file yet. It's not very, uh, that's not great. All right, and, um, all right, let's ask more questions. I'm going to take a look at uh, side dishes. Uh, so this is where we're going to need to start gathering data, gathering and um, uh, data, tidying our data. There are three questions that were multiple answer. Okay, though let's remind ourselves what those are. They look like they're pie, si side pie and dessert. I'm going to start just by grab by only grabbing. Let's say select. ID, but also contains pi. Oh, I'll actually use starts with pi. Starts with dessert or starts, oh, uh, starts with side, right. I'm going to analyze all these at once. Uh, I think it's, it's kind of, um, starts with side, pi, dessert. Uh huh. Yep, I've seen this kind of data before in um, in SurveyMonkey. The story is that each of these fields actually gets filled in with the value if they said yes to it, if they checked that checkbox. Uh, we have a whole bunch of fields here. Anyone, uh, I'm gonna clean this line up or something. Anyone know what we do to turn this all into one column? That's right, we do a gather. We would say we'd gather the um, question we gather the val and the value and then everything except ID. So the question is either side one, side two, side uh, dessert one, dessert two. I'm gonna call that type instead of um, side. And the value is either missing or the actual value. Now that I've done that, I actually don't care about um, about when when value is uh, is NA when value is missing. It's not. Uh, that's that's someone who said no to that question who didn't fix it in. So you have the person. This is the person's ID. This is the type. This is the um the side that they selected. I'm gonna do one other cleaning step. I'm gonna say type string remove. I'm gonna remove any number from the uh from it. So like the one, the two, the digits, because I actually want to say then we have sides, we have desserts, and we have pie. Dessert, pie, and side. Okay. So I'm going to call this um, food gathered. So this will be your gathered columns where people were able to do multiple select. I think there's going to be some others in here. But uh, we'll, we'll deal with that when we, when, we, when we have it. So here we have type and value. All right, I see none... We're probably going to want to drop those columns. They're less um, interesting. Aha. I'm going to up here when I filter not value, I'm going to say value, not value in. I don't want none. I don't want other please specify. We, 
someone else could deal with the with the other data. I'm really just kind of looking for your most common uh, answers. All right. So this to me is a little more interesting than the turkey question because it has more variety. Some things, this looks like just about everyone serves mashed potatoes. Makes sense. Mashed, mashed potatoes are great. Uh, and then most people do rolls uh, and we work our way down. Pumpkin pie is the most common pie. Okay. So we do, um, we can make a graph out of this. Yeah, what I would do, 272 answers, something's uh, a, a rows, uh, observations, so that's a bit odd to me uh, about that. Oh, I, I, I see, okay. Others got included here. Oh, okay, uh-huh, okay, yeah. I think I know what, what's happening. Let me take one more look at that selected side pie dessert. Where are the others? Where are the others in this table? I thought I removed the others from the other, please specify. Let's look through. Uh, okay. I think, yeah, 13, like pi 13. Aha, uh -huh, it's whatever is after other please specify, like the last field of each. Like here, this person wrote out uh, an other, this person just wrote pi. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, so I want to be to remove, I'm just gonna straight up remove them as the first step. Side 15, pi 13, dessert 12. Let's see if I remember that. Uh, pi 15, dessert 13, pi, I got that wrong. It was, it was <laughs> pi 13, doing great. Side 15, pi 13, dessert 12. Did I get it right that time? I think so. Let's see. Yes, I did. Way fewer entries. Uh, okay. So what are people eating? What I can say is uh, at this point is I can actually graph this. Uh, I want to put value on the x-axis and on the y-axis, geom call. And I want to fill it with the type. It's going to be my, my first try. Uh, what am I doing? I wanted to say, what are the most common things people eat? And I code flip it. There's a solid start. I need to reorder my type, my value by um, n. So I need to say, I want to say, here it is. What are people eating? So uh, this is a solid graph. I have been, uh, I'm, I don't love the default theme. So I am going to theme set, theme light before I do anything else. Number of people, uh, respondents. The writing number actually reminded me that it might make sense to use the number of unique respondents. In particular, I'm probably interested in number of unique respondents who selected something for anything here. So uh, I'm actually going to quickly write this down that the, uh, to actually record that as zone variable. N distinct of the IDs, this is going to be the number of people that selected anything in any of these three questions. If they didn't, they're probably not, uh, they're probably skipping through, they're probably missing data. Uh, and uh, we probably shouldn't use them. So I actually then here do n divided by n respondents. This is neat. Okay, and finally I'm going to add a scale y continuous labels percent format. Okay. So this would be a graph where I'd say what percentage of people, um, what are the most common servings? 
Uh, so this, some like ma mashed potatoes are served by the major by the vast majority. This almost approaches Thanksgiving in terms of the, um, oh, pardon me, this almost approaches Turkey, I believe. Uh, and then we work our way down and some things, cherry pie, key lime pie, peach pie, relatively rare. Blondie is the dessert, I, which I really enjoy. Uh, and, uh, all right. So here's our, um, so this would be a graph in terms of percentage of, of uh, respondents having each of these uh, meals. There's an alternative way we could graph this. We could have added a facet wrap by the type. Uh, and uh, yes, we would have, right, right. We would have scales free and probably end call is one probably stack them on top of each other. So we could have found the most common dessert, pie, and side. And we probably would have dropped that um, that legend. I probably would have said show legend equals false. And we got, this graph might make more sense, uh, except that I probably only want the y-axis on a lot, on a, um, on a uh, free. So I probably only want this axis free, uh, and I can actually compare, I see, oh, I see, the most common pies are pumpkin, apple, pecan, the most common sides are mashed potatoes, rolls, and I work my way, I can look in whatever section I'm most interested in. Okay, this graph I would probably keep if I were writing an analysis or a blog post. I'm gonna separate these chunks. What are the most common pies, sides, and desserts? Is the question I would ask here. Okay. Now I'm going to ask how this differs based on other columns. In particular, we've already looked a little bit at income. How does uh, how do the servings differ by income? I don't know if I would expect servings differ by income. I don't know if, say, pumpkin pie is especially popular among high-income families. I have no. Uh, I don't have any expectation, but I'd like to just to take a look at that for a moment. So how would I how would I analyze that? Well, I've got my gathered data set here. I've got it in a format that's really convenient for this kind of counting. I can actually join this with our original survey data. So I can actually say, join the data together. And now I've got all of my original columns. So I can say the value, I say, I've got like, um. Brussels sprouts, and I can connect that to, uh, to for example, um, uh, family income and so on. All right, so, hmm, let's see. I'm actually going to start with age rather than income. Okay, let's remind ourselves what age looks like. 18, 30, 45, 60, each of them is actually a range. That doesn't work for me if I want to do a um, if I want to do a graph. If I, sorry, pardon me. If I want to do a summary, I'm going to need to turn that into a num numeric column. So I'm going to actually say age number is parse number from age. I could have grabbed out 1830, 4560. All right. Now, um, this is not actually what the numbers represent. This is the lower bound of the numbers, but it'll be close enough for what I wanted to, to graph here. What I want to say is, are there things that are eaten by um, old, older people more than younger uh, within this, uh, this, this survey data? So within like each of these sides, all right, or each of these servings. So I'm going to group by, I called it value. I probably should have called it food or something. It's a little late to change it now. But I'm going to say group by value and summarize average age is mean of age number. I need to say drop out all that missing data. So now we can see what differs based on age. And I'm going to quickly throw in a total. Descending by average age. This is a fun little graph. We can say, are the foods that are eaten by people that are, that are a little older or a little younger? Uh, remember that people don't tend not to eat Thanksgiving by themselves, so they're pro they might, there's some mixing together just because, uh, means the average Thanksgiving does tend to have some people that are older, some people that are younger, but it's still worth seeing are there any trends here? 
average age of at least the average lower bound age of a person that served really getting served fruit salad is forty one. Uh, fudge is on the lower side. I'm not really, I'm not too impressed by this spread, especially because some of the lower values are um, have lower counts. So I don't think there's a necessarily a real trend here. Okay, let's use a uh, area of the country instead. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this in case I want to do something later with age. But the more I'm thinking about it, the more uh, age again people go to often the typical things here might have two or three generations present uh it's hard to say there's a trend if, with age but there certainly could be a trend with your uh you with u.s region okay so if i look at u.s region let me see hmm okay the way i would do this is group by u.s region Summarize respondents. I want to know how many respondents there are in each region. Uh, the number of ID. Okay. If I didn't have a, I need this as a denominator for each of the um, each of the values. Instead of summarizing, I'm going to mutate. I'm going to add that on as a column. And then I'm going to do a trick. I'm going to count by U.S. region. I'm going to keep the respondents, and I'm also going to count by the value. Now I've got the the graph I want. That was a complicated little operation I did. I did a grouped by mutate then a count and the way and the trick with that is now i can say in east north central uh america uh, united states uh so there were there were 145 respondents 75 liked uh, had apple i should probably count type let's start with apple the cobbler as dessert. 13 at apple cobbler as dessert 75 had apple pie and that lets us get a percentage. Um, I'm going to ungroup before I do anything. And then I'm going to say percent is n divided by respondents. So now we're saying that, all right, in this region, 8% of people like uh, apple cobbler. So I'm going to start with a common answer. I'm going to start, uh, so I'm going to start with, they say, food by region. This is a pretty interesting little summary. This lets us say, um, we can grab any food we want. We could say uh, filter for value equals apple. I think that'll just get apple pie. In our 10 regions, range by descending percent. And we can say, okay, we'd start by saying, where is apple pie most popular? It looks like it's most popular in uh, New England and the middle Atlantic and least popular in west and south uh, and uh, west and e west south central east south central all right here's where i admit these are slightly confusing terms to me uh i'm gonna go to the article just so i can get a map and we get a little bit of a feel i'm gonna guess that somewhere in there here we are here's our map where we can say uh here's your regions okay and then we'd say okay but man, it's not. It is not telling me what West, South, Central, what any of these uh, these actually mean. If I had a data set of uh, of um, of region to state, I would probably make a map. I don't have a way to do that uh, right away. I don't know. Um, I just don't have like uh, a table that would say here are the states that are they represent um, West, South, Central, East, South, Central. But um. Yeah, but in any case, we can certainly say there's a trend here. It doesn't surprise me um, that New England and Middle Atlantic, so I grew up in New York, spent a lot of time, and I spent a lot of time in New England, and apple, that's certainly an apple pie kind of area. Uh, apple pie is unusually popular there and less popular in some other parts of the country. So that's one thing worth, uh, worth noticing. Okay, that's apple pie. What about pumpkin pie? I think there's only pumpkin pie in the data set, yeah. 83% in New England, 66% in the South, in the South Atlantic. Okay, and uh, let's see, what are the other common ones? Well, I have some here. What's one on 50%? That tends to be a little interesting. Well, apple pie was, and I looked at that. Uh, let's go to pecan. Pecan is, the op is sort of the opposite relatively rare in well in especially middle atlantic pretty popular in 
east, south, central, west, south, central. Again, I'm not the clearest on east and west, south, central. Does that mean Texas? I'm the clearest in what that means. Let's take a look at cornbread. Cornbread, yeah, has some variation. It's more popular, more south, less popular in west and, and uh, east, north, central. Okay, yeah. How popular was it overall? What is it? It's a side. Let's take a look. Cornbread kind of in the middle is, uh, where, where the, in terms of sides. Okay. So that was some, some views. Now, again, the article already looked at regions, so I'm not going to dig deeper into it. I want to show how I would come up with um, types of food by region. Okay. I'm going to look at one last question, which is types of food by uh, prayer. I'm a little bit curious, like, Prayer is one of the personal questions that's asked here. Uh, do you pray before the, um, uh, let's see, did it say prayer before Thanksgiving dinner? Do you typically pray before or after the Thanksgiving meal? I'm going to remind myself all the values of prayer. Yes, no, and, and missing, okay? What I'm going to do is group by type and value. I'm going to summarize the uh, total that said yes. So say, uh, I'm actually gonna filter not is an A prayer right here. I'm gonna say, how many people said yes out of uh, total N? This is of the people that served a particular dessert. We're looking a little bit backwards. Uh, like it's a, We're not saying let's predict what the food you have given that you're praying that that, that your your um your family prays before Thanksgiving. This is saying for each food, what percentage of people prayed before or after the meal? And I'm gonna throw in a percent prayer over total. And I'm gonna do one last step where I say arrange by descending percent. We're going to have some problems with low sample sizes. We're going to handle those in a second. Okay, so for example, macaroni and cheese was an unusually common um, serving around people, around families that prayed before or after the meal. Uh, and Brussels sprouts were unusually less common. Notice I'm skipping some of the ones that have relatively low totals. Those tend to have a lot of random variation. So I could compute the upper and lower confidence bounds for each of these. I can also do, um, do something else. I can use a package that I actually developed called um, EBBR. So here it is. OK, so EBBR is a package for empirical Bayes binomial estimation. So this, uh, this package I actually set up for basically this purpose. When you have a lot of yeses and nos, um, and you want to get um, estimates of the percentage for each, so it uses the, the approach of empirical Bayes estimation, which I used in my series of, oh, that's a broken link, which I used in a series of, of posts on baseball batting averages. So the reason I'm using that is that it lets me, uh, instead of calculating this, this percent, um, just by doing the yeses over the total, I can apply library EBBR, add EBB estimate of prayer total. Now I've got an empirical Bayes estimate, which is a bit, uh, and that's in a value co uh, column called uh, fitted descended dot fitted, it's going to have less random variation in it because it fit a prior, an empirical base prior to the data before it showed the result. Um, I'm, uh, the, the details are in, a, uh, again, my series of, of blog posts and my uh, ebook, Introduction to Empirical Bayes, which you'd find uh, here. Uh, my my ebook, Introduction to Empirical Bayes, shows how to apply this method. What's great about it is some of the lower uh, totals like um, like blondies didn't end up at the top or bottom anymore. They end up a bit more in the middle because it recognized that it was probably due to random variation that they appeared to have an extreme value. 
and this added some cause where I can say macaroni and cheese and sweet potato were, were uh, fruits as well as fruit salad were some of the ones that were shifted towards tending to be um, uh, eaten by families that, that pray during Thanksgiving, whereas Brussels sprouts and mashed potatoes were at the other end of the spectrum. Uh, more likely, a little proportionally more likely to be eaten uh, in families that, um, that prayed less. That is almost in, certain to be confounded with a few other factors, uh, certainly region, probably to a certain extent also um, income, rural, urban, suburban, but it's just a somewhat, um, could be an interesting fact that we can, can take a glance at. Okay, I wanted to show how we would look at, how we group this by food and, and look at how this um, total differs. Okay. I'm going to ask one more question, which is, what sides are eaten together? So what are sides and desserts and so on? Pies and desserts are eaten together. So I'm going to show this data one more time. Food gathered, food gathered. One row for each person, each the type of food, a side, a whatever, um, and the uh, and the actual food. I want to connect. I want to say do. People that eat Brussels sprouts also eat fruit salad. Do people that eat pumpkin pie also have ice cream? Uh, and notice that at that point, working with this data in this tidy form, it doesn't feel entirely natural. Uh, I can't take the Brussels sprouts, compare them to another column. I compare them to another value in that same column. What I'm going to use to solve that is the YDR package. The YDR package is, is one of my own open source contributions, and it's about discovering relationships among these columns in, in a, uh, among these these rows by turning the data into Y data and then re, uh, turning it back through a process such as correlation. So what this means is I'm going to say, uh, how do Brussels sprouts relate to other values? And I'm going to do that by saying, what are pairwise relationships? within the value column. Now, I, need to, I want to know within the value column, but I also want to know what describes uh, each of the, the, these value columns, what links them together. Well, I'm going to say the same person, Brussels sprouts, this same person probably ordered a few other things. In fact, I could filter and find those out. They, ha they have Brussels sprouts, but they also have carrots, they also have cauliflower. They are made in common by the ID column. And I'd say, what is the pairwise, I meant to do correlation between these two, these, um, two uh, this, this based on this column. And I can also say sort equals true. Pairwise core. Check this out. What this says is, what values in that column are more likely to occur with, what, with these other values than you would expect by chance? So it looks like cookies and brownies are often served together. Not just, uh, the, the, if you have one, you're more likely to have the other. If you have sweet potato, you probably also have, have macaroni and cheese. Here's some natural pairings of our uh, types of food. Uh, in particular, our, um, our sides, our pies, our desserts. So this is, um, this is cool because I could start by saying, all right, if you have pumpkin pie, what else do you have? So I'll say if your item one is pumpkin, remember that that's pie. You tend to also have mashed potatoes. You tend to have rolls or, um, or, and or biscuits. You might be less likely to have macaroni and cheese. Those two are, are um, anti-correlated, inversely correlated. All right. I could say, what if you have pecan pie? Con pie is often served with yams and sweet, or sweet potato casserole. It's not often seen alongside apple. It's not op often seen alongside cauliflower. Okay. So this will allow us to cluster our Thanksgiving, um, uh, our Thanksgiving sides, pies, and desserts. So I'm going to call this food cores for co food correlations. Okay, what, can I, what kind of graph can I make with this? My favorite is a network. I like to use the ggraph package as well as the igraph package. And what I say is, here's my correlations. I have every pair of foods here, all 992. That's too many. I'm going to use the head function to pick just the 50 closest relationships. 
probably gonna increase that later. I'll see how we uh, feel. And I'm going to say, I want to turn this into a graph. Say graph from data frame. A graph is a, when I say graph, I don't mean like a ggplot2 graph. I mean uh, a, um, a mathematical structure with vertices like cookies and sweet potato, and then edges like the one that links cookies to brownies or pumpkin to mashed potatoes. I'm gonna take this, and that can be put into ggref. It's Thomas Pedersen's amazing package for creating graphs you, through uh, th using the grammar of graphics in ggplot2. So if I create a graph, I get an empty graph. Right now it's got nothing on it. I need to add two layers. I need to add our points, a point for every node. Geome, no, every node now gets one point. And I need to add edges underneath that. Geome edge link. So now I can say, here's my network. Every one of these is a food, and it's connect the connections are correlations. In fact, I can go a little bit farther and say, let's set the, I think I would say edge alpha equals uh, correlation. Because remember, we had these correlations that are higher for stronger ones. Not edge alpha. Here I am trying to remember how this wi works. Uh oh, I am forgetting something. Oh. Huh. I don't know exactly what I'm missing. Okay, let's ignore that for now. Uh, what I would do, I need to add one other layer. I need to say uh, these points aren't very useful because they don't have um, any labels on them. I need to say geom node text label equals name. I'll come back later. I'm not sure how why I wasn't able to set the transparency. Now every one of these points has a name. They're gonna keep rearranging themselves based on random noise unless I make sure they don't. I don't like how every time I make the graph it's changing its shape. So I'm going to set the seed. I often set the seed to the current year if I'm being lazy. And I say, uh, now if I create the graph multiple times, it always looks the same. Okay, so these are our correlations, our network of types of food. I think I can probably do with a few more connections than this. Eh, no, I couldn't. 75. Each of them actually gets paired up, so I'm only doing 75 divided by 2. Uh, but this is this graph is fine. All right. I really want to get those those edges Is it width equals uh, Correlation So weird that I can't yeah, I'm not sure why I'm not able to do uh, set the, the, uh, the edges to have this in the correlation. All right. Last thing is, I don't actually need X or Y axes or numbers or anything like that. This looks a little better. Okay. I'm also, while I'm at it, I am going to V, I'm going to make sure they don't actually land on the point, that they're right next to it. Here we go. This is a pretty solid graph. Okay. Now we see what, what um, types of food tend to be correlated with each other. So we see is, for example, uh, cornbread and corn tend to, be, tend to be served together. Cornbread and apple cobbler. We have, we have a cluster over here of all the way from mashed potatoes and pumpkins to rolls and biscuits, all the way to pecan pie. Uh, and apple pie tends to be served with ice cream, which is in turn correlated with cookies. Also carrots, which I, I don't think I would have guessed. Some of these I would guess. Fudge and brownies and cookies and chocolate are all correlated. All the desserts tend to pop up together. It's actually something I'm noticing a little bit is that um, desserts are often correlated. If you serve one kind, you serve many. Pies look like they're less correlated. Maybe because people only serve one, often only serve one pie. You've got apple pie. I think there's a peach pie. Uh, pecan pie. They're not correlated with other types. Pumpkin pie is over here. Okay. All right, I'm still puzzled why I can't get the edges. Uh, I really wanted to get the um, edges to, to look like correlations, uh, to, to have a, to, 
the particular correlation. Let's see if I'm missing anything in the instructions. Otherwise, I'll move on. Edge alpha looks pretty good. AES edge alpha equals. I definitely had a. I definitely had correlation right there in the data. Yeah. Well, I think I'm missing something. I guess it could be a bug, but it's probably on me. Okay. But I'm going to leave it. It's not uh, worth digging into further. I'm going to make one last change to this graph. Uh, I want the points to represent color. I want to tell what's a dessert, what's a, um, uh, yeah, what's a dessert, what's, what's each type of food, uh, what's a pie, what's a side. And I also want a number. I want to know the number of people that have it. I want to use both those when I'm drawing the point, the points. That means I need to actually say, let's count the type and value. Now I've got a, a data set with 32 row observations, one for each of the types of food. So then I'll say food types, and I'll use this as the vertices. The approach that I'll say is I'll say vertices equals food types. I actually need to rename these a little. I actually need the value to come first for the vertices to be able to understand it. T mashed potatoes, side 817, good. And now, I, if all goes well, I can actually say color equals type. Let's find out how that works. There it is. Now what I have is a graph where actually each point gets its own uh, type. So I could say, ah, these sides are linked, which are then linked with pumpkin pie, uh, the, the green point. We also see now that I've added vertices, we include a couple points that weren't linked to anything. So fruit salad, cherry, they didn't meet our cutoffs in order to be correlated, uh, to be correlated with anything to actually get linked to them. I wonder where mashed potatoes is. I, I don't see it on this graph. Maybe I'm just missing. Ah, there it is. There's mashed potatoes. Okay. And once I've got those aesthetics worked in, notice now I've got now I'm actually creating aesthetics that are. Um, here that that uh, that are actually affecting the graph based on each food type. I can actually also say size equals n. This is a bit of a better graph where I'm actually saying, um, here we go. I'm actually saying, uh, look at how many respondents actually uh, eat each of these. So we can see that. Something like uh, blondies is in fact pretty rare. We don't want to give that too much consideration in terms of this uh, this graph. We can see some of these common trends, these larger points, uh, generally makes it a little more uh, more interesting. You know, you notice some of this text is overlapping. Here's a great trick. I go into the geome node point and I throw in a repel equals true. Oh. It's not repel equals, oh, it's not in geom node point. Correction, it's in geom node text. There we go. Notice now green beans, green bean castle gets pushed off that point a little bit. All right, so now we have a graph where we see the, the kind of galaxy of foods, the constellation of foods that tend to be served together at Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, and now I can throw a title on this and say title is What Foods Get Served Together at Thanksgiving. I can throw in a, um, a label for the color. I don't really need a label. It's dessert, pie, or side. Uh, the size, though, I'd really rather it be... Uh, you know, I'm going to make it percentage of respondents, and I'm going to put the size as n over n respondents. Now I've actually got a slightly more meaningful graph. I'm going to throw in a scale size continuous um, labels equals. I want it to be in the to actually look like a percent when it gets printed. What food gets served together at Thanksgiving? Well, we see it's uh, that uh, pumpkin pie is popular. It often gets served with mashed potatoes and rolls, biscuits. So we could actually, we could cluster this. We could kind of say, are you a pumpkin, biscuits, mashed potatoes kind of family? Or are you a 
cauliflower and carrots or a um or let's say are you a corn cornbread macaroni cheese sweet potato peach cobbler uh and yeah we can start to look at each of these um these in terms of their uh in terms of their their clusters so if i were um if I had some more time, we could have looked more at clusters. We could have done principal component analysis, which would have said what the dimensions of this data were. We could have used um, cluster analysis to say if it did fit into natural groups. But for now, the network will have to do. So in review, we looked a little bit at some of the questions like uh, what gets served and how is it prepped. Uh, we looked at, um, I really shouldn't have said effect on income. I should have said relationship with income. Uh, just a correlation. We look at some correlations with income. We looked at um, some correlations with income with um, cranberry and homemade. We learned how we had to gather the food data set in order to analyze it uh, with our sides and pies and such. And we made a graph out of that. That notice we had to, once it's tidied, it was, it was much easier to make this graph than it otherwise would have been when it was still all in many different columns. And we... Uh, and we, we learned we used empirical Bayes estimation to answer some yes, no questions within each category. And finally, we created a network. So uh, all right, that's all the time we have. Uh, be sure to check out the YDR package and the, uh, the book Introduction to Empirical Bayes to learn about some more of the more advanced methods I was talking about today. And uh, if you celebrated, I hope you and your family have a wonderful Thanksgiving.